Amen. 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 Um, beautiful, powerful Hallelujah. prayer. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Well, tonight we're going to uh, talk about uh, discovering our destiny. And I know that Brother Fred and I, we we think about destiny and purpose all the time. And are we fulfilling uh, God's purpose? Are we fulfilling what he wants us to do? And so tonight we are going to uh, just explore, if you will, uh, the word of God and what does the Lord say about our destiny? Brother okay. Fred? Okay. So the scriptures often talk about us as being like a boat on the on the sea and there's a lot of different factors that uh, are coming against us to drive us in different directions and the and particularly the enemy would like to uh, push us against the rocks and have us destroyed lots of people have have done that and uh, so we want to just consider that for a moment and how to keep away from the rocks and how to keep moving forward and uh, so I just want to put this out there for for a moment, just a couple of quick illustrations, and just consider that uh, we're like a. I may, I may have it up, <laughs> exactly the same. Okay, I'm, we may be like a dot or a boat on uh, the water, and we can move in any direction. There are all kinds of factors causing us to move in in different directions, but we have some control over things. And in particular, I'll show it again. Let's we'll see. Okay, so there, there it is. That that's uh, just a we're just a boat on the sea, uh, and and many scriptures talk about us being like that. And I want Sherry to read uh, three of them. We look at Ephesians first of all. Ephesians four. Uh, Ephesians four fourteen. As a result, we are no longer to be children tossed here and there by waves and carried about by every wind of doctrine, by the trickery of people, by their craftiness in deceitful scheming. Oh, do you think you'd ever encounter somebody with deceitful scheming? Oh, we have. We've, been, we've encountered that a lot of times. Yeah. But, but there's other people that uh, just want to control and manipulate us, and, and same for all of us. And we have to be aware of these things. And we've got to grow up in Christ so that we're not uh, tossed to and fro by the winds, and particularly the winds of doctrine. And that's what religion uh, will do. It'll take you over there, and it'll take you over there. But we've got to be established on God's Word. And then James has some things to say about this as well in chapters 1 to begin with. James 1, 6. But he must ask in faith without any doubting, for the one who doubts is like the surf of the sea, driven and tossed by the wind. And then James chapter so, 3. So we can just be in doubting and not believing and we'll be tossed around. James 3 verses 4 and 5. Look at the ships too. Though they are so large and are driven by strong winds, they are nevertheless directed by a very small rudder wherever the inclination of the pilot determines. So also is the tongue a very small member of the body, yet it boasts of great things. Oh, hallelujah. So what we're seeing here, there's just a lot of references in the Word of God that talk about winds trying to blow us off of course. And it's hard to get back on course once you get off. It talks about a a ship and it's a large ship but it just has a tiny rudder and that's how our life is uh, we can get blown off of course and our rudder is our tongue what we're saying and so uh, this is really an important subject that the bible talks about but then there is also the other side of it and that is uh, what the bible says about your future and about your destiny and so that's what we want to talk about now and, and uh, there is a destiny that God has for you, a purpose that he wants uh, for you. And so here we begin again with the dot. Uh, and we, in that last diagram, I said that, that you could move in any direction, but now God wants you to move in a particular direction. And, and I, that might be one day or two days or three days, or it might be uh, one year or two years or three years. And so this is our destiny. 
And so what we want to do is to see how are we going to discover what it is when we're actually just on a sea uh, of humanity and we could move in a lot of different directions. Mm -hmm. And so let's just keep those things in mind. And uh, the Bible says a lot about your destiny. Let's right. look at uh, Psalm 139. It says you do have a destiny. Let's read this here. Please. Psalm 139, verse 16. In your book were written all the days that were ordained for me, when as yet there was not even one of them. Okay, so he has written mm -hmm. in his book, which is, of course, to us, the Word of God. He has written in it uh, all of our days, even before we were ever born or before we were formed in the mother's womb. They were already written about us and where we were going to go. Now, we're going to have to see how to do this. And this is Hebrews 12, uh, verse 2. It says we've got to keep looking at Jesus. Hebrews 10, verse 7. Oh, 10. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Then oh, I said, I... Behold, I have come. Oh, well, yeah. This I'm sorry. I, uh, I, I'm sorry. I got my scriptures out of order there. The 10, 7. Okay. It also talks about the destiny and it says and this is jesus and he's saying hey i have looked in the bible i've looked in the word of god and i have found my destiny okay then i said behold i have come it is written of me in the scroll of the book or in the volume of the book to do your will O god okay so that's for us too how do we find it well it's a it's a process it's an everyday process and an important thing that we're talking about today is the, how the prophetic word helps give us direction uh, so that we're moving towards our destiny. You know, the prophetic word is uh, a word that comes from God. It, it may come uh, directly to you mm -hmm. or it may come in dreams or visions or a prophet may speak it out or another believer uh, may give you a, a word of prophecy. So that keeps moving you in the direction uh, that God has destined for you. That's the idea here. He gives you all. See, he is with you. The Lord is with you now. This is the mm -hmm. present. That dot is the present. And, but he will also be with you in uh, year one and year two and year three. He's out there in all of those time periods. As a matter of fact, God is outside of time, but he can, he's also in time. And he can give you messages, let's say from your future. He sends back messages to you. And he sends those messages in your dreams and in your visions and in your the prophetic words that he gives you. And so all of these are given to you. And, and this is like an encounter with God. When, mm -hmm. when you have a, uh, a prophetic word given to you, here, here you are. You're just a boat on a sea. And there's a lot of forces coming in a lot of different directions to drive you a lot of different ways, some of which want to destroy you. The devil wants to destroy you. Amen. Okay, but God is in your future and he's sending messages back to you as well. He's giving you dreams and visions at, about your future, about a good future. He has a good future for you. He has plans for you. And so when you have a dream with the Lord, of, of the Lord, so that God gives you a dream at night, or he gives you a vision, or, or you look at the scriptures, you study the scriptures, and they become alive to you, that's all the Holy Spirit communicating with you about the future. And that's an encounter with God. But there are two things. There are two things. There's an encounter and a process. And a lot of people just go with the encounter and think, oh, it's all done. So God may give you a vision for the future. He may give you a prophetic word about your future. And you may think, well, I've got the prophetic word. It's all done. But the encounter just opens a door so that you can walk through the process. Uh, it's not the end. A prophetic word is not the end. I mean, it, it's just the beginning. And that, so a door opens when you get a prophetic word, a word of prophecy, a door opens, an opportunity arises. Mm, and and if, if in the process of your living, you keep moving in that direction, then uh, you will fulfill it. Uh, so it's an encounter and a process. And a lot of people don't, don't go through the process. Mm -hmm. It's a, a process is a step-by-step process process 
of doing what the prophetic word or related to the prophetic word, walking into the prophetic word. Now, the reason I like this diagram is that uh, here you are in the present. That's all of us. Any one of us is here in the present, in this present dot. I'm trying to keep my eyes above the uh, paper as well. <laughs> and so, and the Lord is out here in your future and, and he's sending back messages to you. And he's saying, come this way, come this way. Mm -hmm. uh, okay, do this. And so this is what your future looks like. And so you need to use your, all of these visions and prophecies as a stimulus for your future so that you can move in that direction. If you keep these things in mind, if you keep what the prophetic word, mm -hmm. what the, uh, the prophets have spoken about you, the dreams that you've had, the visions, let that be a stimulus of your future, but you're in the present. You're always in the present. And when you get out here to year one, you'll still be in the present. And so you're always in the present, but you're moving towards the destiny that God has for you towards that, Becoming. towards that future. So a lot of people are just living their life doing, and that's such a, a, a misunderstanding of what life is about. Life with God is not just about doing. It's about becoming whom he has called you to be. Oh, hallelujah. Because we are being changed from glory to glory. And yes. every time we go into one of these areas, we're going to be changed into uh, more glorious. More, It's going to be more and more glorious. And so he's calling us into our future, a planned future, something that he has for you that's really good and it's the best you could have you go in any other direction mm -hmm. it's not going to be as good as what god has for you now you might think well jesus was the son of god uh and he didn't need any prophetic words spoken over him but that's not that's not the way it was mm -hmm. you look at the bible there were a lot of prophecies given about jesus christ even before he was born there was an angel sent to G to mary uh, and and told about him and who he would be. See, these prophetic words, they began to propel Jesus even before he was formed in his mother's womb. They began to propel him in a direction of the future that God had for him. Let's look at these uh, verses. First, uh, it was about the angel, what the angel said about it. In Luke Jesus. chapter 1, verses 31 through 33, And behold, you will conceive in your womb and give birth to a son, and you shall call his name Jesus. He will be great, and will be called the Son of the Most High God. And the Lord God will give him the throne of his father David. And he will reign over the house of Jacob forever, and his kingdom will have no end. Okay. So Hallelujah. Th these words were prophetic words about what was going to happen in Jesus' life. And that's the reason we all need prophetic words, because these words were spoken to help propel him into the future that God had for him. Now, when he was seven days old, the, Mary and Joseph took him up to the temple. Seven days old, or, or maybe eight, I, I forget. There's eight. Eight, I apologize. Eight, eight days. When he was eight days, and there's more prophetic words spoken over him. All of these prophetic words and he's not even hearing them yet. I mean, not understanding them yet. He's just a baby, an infant. And yet God considers it important enough to propel him into his future that these prophetic words are going to be spoken over him. Let's look at Simeon, what Simeon said at, uh, over Jesus when he was only eight days old. Luke 2, verses 30 through 32. For my eyes have seen... My salvation, which you have prepared in the presence of all the people, a light for the revelation for the Gentiles and the glory of your people, Israel. So here are these prophetic words spoken. And that were that wasn't the only ones. Of course, there were all throughout the Old Testament. There were prophetic words spoken about him. And now as an infant, there's words spoken about him and not just Simeon, but also Anna spoke. We don't know exactly what she said. But she uh, began to prophesy over him as well. And so these words began to move him 
towards that future mm -hmm. that God had prepared for him. It's the same for you. We need to be around prophets. We need to be dreaming dreams. We need to be seeing visions. Amen. We amen. need to be looking in the scriptures and, and letting the scriptures become alive. Alive. To us. Alive. To because us. all of those things then stimulate us uh, to walk into the future that God has for us. Hallelujah. And Hallelujah. The other thing it does, it causes us to live now in this present life so that we can attract what God has for us. So you've got two things going on. It's going to stimulate you to move in the direction of, that God has for you, and it's going to attract what he has for you so that when you get to year one, you're exactly who God has for you at that time. When you get into year two, you're ready for it. You'll be walking in that. Mm. And so we all have a destiny. It's written in the word of God and it's revealed by, uh, by the Holy Spirit. So we, yeah, yeah. we saw all of that. Now, you know, one of, one of the things I, I think about is that we are to be looking at Jesus. That's where yeah, and, right. and where is the where is Jesus? Well, he's in the Word of God. He Amen. Is he the is the Word. God. So we have to keep looking at the Word of God, studying the Word of God. And that's the reason we're here tonight, just to share the Word of God and talk about talk about the Word of God. I, I want us to think about what is the kingdom. Well, uh, Luke chapter uh, seven. Uh, uh, what is it, Jerry? Nine sixty-two. Nine sixty-two tells us something about the kingdom that's very important. Okay. Luke 9, 62. But Jesus said to him, No one, after putting his hand to the plow and looking back, is fit for the kingdom of God. Okay, so this is just a quick description of what the kingdom is about. It's about a plow. It's about preparing something. Preparing. Mm -hmm. But it's nothing about looking back. So it's about looking forward to your future. So there's two really important things revealed about the kingdom of God in this verse. And the first, you're preparing, and that's with the plow, for a future. Preparing for a future. Now, plow indicates a farmer, that you're going to be plowing up some things. Yeah. So we've all had some things sown into our lives, weeds. Uh, yeah, we, yeah. They're called weeds. And uh, they're, they're sown by the devil, they're sown by his agents, they're sown by religion, they're all of these things. We have to break them up but with the plow. So, uh, And, of course, the tongue is talked about as being a plow, and so we have to plow those things up. Well, that's the reason we have to continue to study the Word of God. And, and to be, continue to pray. And continue to be around believers who will encourage us. Uh, otherwise, we're not breaking up the ground, not preparing for the kingdom. For the future hallelujah, in the kingdom. Hallelujah. That's what the kingdom is in a nutshell. It's preparing for your future, the future that God has As for, for you. you. Amen. And, and so we're not looking back. So the kingdom has nothing about looking back and the things what the people have done to you or said about you. It, it's not about that. It's about looking forward to what God has for you. And, and then there's this other verse that's really important, and that's John 16. Uh, believe it's on the next page right there and uh, it, what it says here and then I'll let Sherry read it but I'm just going to say something about it it says that when the Holy Spirit comes the spirit of truth he's going to reveal the future to you he's going to reveal what is to come for you now I, I think a lot of people could look at that and say well I'm going to be uh, I'm going to understand the future so I can go to uh, Las Vegas and gamble, and I don't know what the next card is that's going to... Mm -hmm. Now, this is not about gambling. It's not even about mm -hmm. uh, business things per se. It's about revealing your future. He's going to reveal things to come. He's going to reveal to Hallelujah. you who you are now, who you are in the future, who you are in the next period, in the next period. That's what the Holy Spirit... And you can't know what your future looks like in from heaven's perspective without the Holy Spirit because it's the Holy Spirit who reveals what is going to come in your future. See, the kingdom is all about the realm of the Holy Spirit 
and then there's a plow in there and that says you're going to have to plow up some fallow ground uh, plow up those old weeds and you got to be mm -hmm. planting the good seed the good seed of god's word and watering it and, and then you'll be moving exactly where god wants you to move by the holy spirit because he's your guide into the things to come okay <clears throat> now what what Can is it? yeah okay read read that please john 16 <clears throat> Uh, verses 13 through 15, and this is out of the Passion uh, Translation. And when the truth-giving spirit comes, he will unveil unveil the reality of every truth within you. He where, where, where is the truth? It's within you. Hallelujah. It's the things within you, the things that God has planted in, in you. you. That he, you have a treasure within you. He's going to begin to open those things up and reveal those things to you, okay? He won't speak about himself, but only what he hears from the Father. And he will reveal prophetically to you uh -oh. what is to come. <laughs> he will glorify me on the earth, for he will receive from me what is mine, and then he will reveal it unto you. So, what, Hallelujah. what is what is the Lord's? It's yours. And so yeah. he he reveals to you what is Jesus for you, what he, what Jesus has for you. He reveals your future. He reveals uh, what is coming. Your for destiny. You. Uh, it's all laid out by the Holy Spirit. You have a specific path to go down in your life. And a lot of people get wander around and don't realize there's a place that we need to go. There's a, we're in a place now and in a year from now, we need to be, Amen. we need to have goals and uh, dreams and visions about our future, about where we're going to be in a year or five years or 10 years. We need to be moving in the direction that God puts in our heart by the Holy Spirit and guides us. So all of those things are important to help us understand what our destiny is. And so he's, he's communicating with us in a lot of ways. And just because we hear a prophetic word, that doesn't mean that's the end of everything. That's an encounter, mm -hmm. and that's just the beginning of a process, and mm -hmm. that process is is over our lifetime. And and Job makes this incredible statement in Job yeah, seventeen. I love, I love this. Seventeen love this. nine. The righteous keep moving forward. Doesn't say anything about you going backwards, or going back into the dark places that you were. The righteous keep moving forward, and those with clean hands become stronger and stronger. Woo! I love that. So God has a plan for you, a Amen. pathway for you. And only the righteous can get on that pathway. And so we have to be doing what's right in this present time period to keep moving in that direction. So it's a specific way to go. And it's all laid out in the word of God. You have to find yourself in the word of God. And we are being transformed from glory to glory. So every one of these stages, there ought to be a higher level of glory. Oh, hallelujah. I've got it all backwards. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> higher, every, when we go over here, that's a higher level of glory, a higher level of glory, a higher level of glory. Uh, mm -hmm. We're being changed in every, all of those, we're being conformed to the image of Jesus Christ. Amen. And Amen. so our identity is changing. And we'll talk more about this in days ahead. Our identity is changing. And and uh, you might think of yourself all one way, but sure, it will, it's easy to think about yourself when you were, let's say, 17 or 18, but, but you're not that way. And so when you get to be 25, you, you don't have the same desires or uh, mm. our plans as you did when you were 17 and 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 in each uh, a five year period you're you're going to be changing changing if you're following the Lord Jesus Christ you're going to be you're going to be better looking you're going to be <laughs> look better. oh here you are in the present and out here yeah, you're going to be better looking am I backwards yeah, ever backwards yeah. huh? oh did I? no no okay okay where's this Okay. Oh, well, that's what it is right there. Huh? Okay. Okay. Go, go. I don't know. Okay. The <laughs> idea is you're going to be better looking in your future. Why? Why would you be better looking in your future than you look now? 
because you're going to be looking more like Jesus. Oh, hallelujah. You're going to have more authority, more power mm. in every time period. You're being changed from glory to glory. And that's, your, that's the reason your identity is being changed. Now, all of that comes about, the, the, the title of the message tonight is how to discover it. Well, you've got to spend time with the Lord. I mean, spend amen. time with the Holy Spirit. Spend time with believers who encourage you, who yes, see yes. what the potential you have in you. It's got to be released. And some of the releasing comes prophetically. Oh, hallelujah. And you know what uh, uh, First Chronicles 2020 says? says that uh, believe the Lord and you'll be established. Believe his prophets and you will prosper. And so not only do you have to believe the Lord, but you also have to have some people around you who are going to prophesy to you, who are going to encourage you and, and see the potential in you and, and release it, release the potential that's within you. And a lot of people have said this to me, oh, all I need is the Lord. Where well, you're missing, mm -hmm. missing half of what God has for you. If you think you're going to get it all from the Lord, because it says you get some of it from the Lord and you get some of it through his people. Ooh, hallelujah. hallelujah. You get some of it that you need from the Lord, mm -hmm. but you get some from his people. He has it for you. He has everything for you. Everything is yours, but you don't get it all yourself by your relationship with the Lord. You've got to have believers who are going to speak into your life and release some things into your life. We need each other. That's Amen. the reason we need Amen. each other. Amen. Otherwise, we could just go and live in a cave. That's right. Well, how do you? How can you love anybody if you're living in the cave? And you could say, oh, I love everybody. I love everybody, but I'm not going to encounter anybody. I'm not going to see anybody. I'm just going to live in my little cave. I'm going to hoard up food. I'm going to get me a gun and shoot anybody that comes and wants my food. Well, that doesn't sound like love yeah, to me. Yeah. No, love, to, see, to, love, to express love, you have to express it to someone. You, you first express it to God. He expressed his love to you. He loved you, uh, and now you love him, and so express your love mm -hmm. to him, but then he pours his love in you so you can express it out to others. And so how you, how you see yourself today is not what God wants for you to be the end result. That's where you are today is not the end result. You're going to look more and more like Jesus and more and more like Jesus. You're going to be better and better looking every day, every day. If you're following on to, to know Jesus, to know the uh, resurrection of his power Amen. and the fellowship Amen. of his suffering. If, you, if you're pressing on to him, you're going to be conformed to his image. And that's God. Hallelujah. That's what God is doing in your life. And that's the reason we need people who can prophesy into our lives, who can speak the truth to us so that we keep on a path. See, God has a path, a highway for you. And on that highway, no ravenous beasts, no wild animals are going to come up there and yeah. tear you Amen. as long as you stay on God's highway. And that's Keep Isaiah 30. Forward. That's Isaiah 35. If you'd like to read that, <clears throat> that God has a highway, that no no beast are on that and and no unrighteous uh, can can travel there. It's only for God's people. And uh, so he's there to protect us. As he's changing us, he is also protecting us. And uh, and I thank him for that, uh, being what he wants us to be. Uh, you know, a, a little chorus comes to my mind, and it's to be like Jesus, to be like Jesus. That's all I ask, just to be like him, to be like Jesus. To be like Jesus, that's all I ask, just to be like him. Hallelujah. You know, and that is, like, like Brother Fred said, it's a process that we go through, and it's called spiritual growth uh, from childhood to adulthood. 
And if you read the book of Job, the book of Job is, is uh, actually a maturity book uh, from the time Job was uh, young in the Lord till he was mature. And when he got to be mature, it says in, I think, chapter 41, that that his captivity was, was uh, turned around or reversed when he began to pray for his friends. <laughs> and and they weren't really his friends either. They were, yeah. they, they, they said a lot of mean things. A lot of mean things I, to I, him. I call them so-called friends. So-called friends. Praying but, for his so-called friends. But when he began to pray, then that showed maturity. And uh, and I don't know if, if you uh, have seen the post that I put up early this morning, uh, but when I woke up this morning, I heard uh, people crying. I literally heard the cries of the people and I knew that they were in trouble. There was a, a, a um, time of chaos uh, for many people and that this is all over the world. And I began to hear those cries come out and the Lord began to speak to me about prayer. And, uh, and as we pray, we yield ourselves to the Lord to be changed. And that's when he can begin to work with us and say, I want you to go to the next level. I want you to go to the next step and, and, and be who I've called you to be. You know, there was a, a time when I was looking in the scriptures in the, in the book of Judges, and I was reading about Deborah, and, and I got uh, to the part where it said that she was um, a warring prophetess, and, and the Holy Spirit spoke to me and said, that's who you are. That's who you are. You will go to battle with people. Remember, she went to battle with Barak. He said, you will go to war with people and you will prophesy and I will hear and I will perform uh, the word of God. And so as you read the scripture, as you pray, as you spend time with the Lord, then you're going to discover your destiny. And, uh, and this has been a beautiful message uh, tonight. Brother Rich, it's been you. beautiful. Thank you. Thank you.